Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we want to talk about better password management for online accounts and browsers utilizing the KeyPass browser plugin. I know I rarely recommend plugins. I'm not a huge fan of browser plugins, but when it comes down to remembering login credentials for several sites, if we have to choose to rely on either our memory, manually typing it in, uh, manually moving from our password manager over into the browser or having a good open source browser plugin that is specifically designed to use with one of the best password managers. Let's do that option, especially since they are always on the verge of experimenting. And I have found that in my tests, this is working with a whole variety of different browsers. Now I'm doing my test here on Linux. I have every indication that this is going to work the same if you are on Windows and if you are on Mac. And setting up your individual browsers is actually quite easy. So of course we are using the password manager KeePass XC. Now the only real downside of this key, um, password manager is that it is an offline type platform. That's my personal way to do it. I do not want to put anything up there into the cloud and just have all that possible stuff available to be hacked or accessed. And that is, that's kind of risky business, scary stuff. And I don't really want to do any of that. <laughs> and so uh, what we're going to do is um, I use KeePass XC. Now how I manage it, first for smartphones, there are several apps that will manage it. I don't actually log into anything on my smartphone. So if we need to do videos about that, I'll do them in the future. That does sound like a good thing to do. But what, I, what I'm not going to do on this particular video is talk about this aspect. We're looking at desktop computers. I'm experimenting with this on Linux Mint 20.1 is going to be our testing environment. We have installed the latest KeePass XC by utilizing the Ubuntu PPA because the one that is in the repo is still a little bit old. And so I went ahead and did that. And then I tested a whole variety of different browsers and we're going to have a look at those. Now what I personally do is I have one master password file that's on my highly encrypted backup computer and it stays on my personal uh, network drive. It does not go anywhere out on any clouds. And then where I need to, I will break that down into individual little databases. This, this is a little bit of extra work, but the security of it is definitely worth it. So I'll break this down into individual little sections and then I will have one password manager that can be accessed by KeePass XC for the browser, but I'll have other password, uh, other databases rather for some other purposes as well. So what we're doing here today is I just through two test accounts that I'm just experimenting with and playing with right now, those being uh, Tutanoa and a Plex account, neither of which are mission critical, nor are they anything I'm going to be keeping long term. I'll still blur some stuff out, but nevertheless, what I did want to do here is just kind of show you how it works and how this integration is going to work. So what I do is I have that one file, it stays in my cloud, and then I pull it down to each device that needs it. And it's very possible to sync it across the devices, but I really only change the thing once per month. So once per month, I'll go through and pull it down to each of my devices as part of my, uh, my security cleanup for, for the month. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to jump on over to Linux Mint 20.1 and uh, we're going to have a look at uh, KeePass XC. Now I have a whole video about using KeePass XC, so we're not going to go into any details for there. If you like this, and you're like, I need to know how to use that a little bit better. Head on over to that video. I'll have that link there in the description so you can watch that video. And then um, you can use this video to talk about how to integrate your KeePass XC manager with your browser. So let's go ahead and head on over to Linux Mint and we'll be able to see where we're going from here. All right, so here we are on Linux Mint. This is 20.1. And as I said, the version that is in the repo is going to be a little bit older. So if you just head on over to the main KeePass website, 
then uh, you can actually find that information. So, and remember we're using KeePass XC, which the reason is KeePass doesn't have as a lot of, uh, as many of the newer features. KeePass XC is a fork of that, which is carrying in with some of the latest technologies. So we can come over here. If you hit the download for Linux, we have an app image. I actually use the Snap version on some of my distributions. On Arch, I believe I'm using the Snap version. On my Windows PC, I use the portable 64-bit. There's a Mac version. I don't log into anything on Mac, so I don't use it over there. So over here on Linux, I will either grab it from the repo or I will grab it as a snap. And I think I could probably just, in fact, you know, right now, I think since I rebuilt my Arch, I might actually be using it directly from the repo. I, I honestly don't remember. But what I did is I installed the official Ubuntu PPA. This is going to make sure that it's always up to date on anything that's based on Ubuntu, like our Linux Mint 20 here. You can see over here is um, you can just download it directly on Debian, although that one might be an older version. I don't know. This did get me the latest. So I'll go ahead and boot up KeePass XC. So when we get into here and I go on down to my about at the time of the recording, we're at 2.6.3, which I do believe is the latest version. So I have a, a radically secure password here that I promise is not just password. <laughs> Don't do that, guys. <laughs> but what this is going to do, this is just a test database here. So you can see that we have uh, we have here some uh, just two two passwords I put in here for our Plex server and for Tutanoa. Now, the way you need to get this to work is you actually have to have the URL entered in. You'll see I dropped the URL down into the notes. I just want to show you that it will not work without that in there. And then I just have this here so I can just jump it back up there. Now for for this to work, you are gonna have to have KeePass XE is going to be, need to be running in your background. So we can debate whether or not that is a good thing or a bad thing, but I'd rather the application running in the background on my local computer than some cloud connected service any day of the year. And what we are going to do is uh, to get this guy integrated is first we want to hit the settings gear over here. And then we want to go down to browser integration. And you can see here that you actually have fine control over the browsers that you are integrating. You can enable browser integration up here. And if you de-check this box, no browsers are going to be able to connect with your KeePass database. So this is actually the best way to secure all of this kind of stuff. You can request to unlock the database if it is locked. So this is going to prompt you for your master password if it happens to have timed out. And then you can see matching URL scheme, return only the best matching credentials, allow returning expired. So you can see all the different settings. And then here you can see that they have a variety of browsers already supported. Now you need to grab the official extension, which you can find by clicking on the link. So Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, and Brave is here. Microsoft Edge is over here. Firefox is over here. So Firefox is also probably going to work on Waterfox as well. It does work on LibreWolf. And LibreWolf is enabled just by toggling on and off your Firefox. I have tested Firefox, Chromium, Vivaldi. Um, sadly, in the Edge, it is here, but it is grayed out. The Actually, the plugin does work on Edge on Linux, but the integration is apparently not set up yet. So that's probably something that's coming on down the pipeline. They're probably just already getting ready for it because Edge on Linux is still in development phases. So it's very possible that they do not have that enabled uh, for that purpose. But sadly, we cannot test it out if Edge is, for some reason, your default browser of choice. I did not test Tor, Brave, or Google Chrome, although with this, I really don't think that there would be uh, there would be any um, uh, any concerns with those. So here is uh, just a few other extra settings there. So you can uh, look through all of those. And let me go ahead and show you now how to get this guy started up. So we're going to click on the button here to bring us to our add-on page. You could presumably search for this as well. Notice that this is the direct link. Now, I will note this as well. Somebody asked me in my video about LibreWolf, how do you add extensions? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and do a small tangent on that one now. So let's go ahead and boot up Libra Wolf. And on Libra Wolf, all you need to do is just search the uh, the add-ons 
database specifically for what you want. If you go ahead and hit this guy here and search for something, you'll see it'll just go to a white page. That's one of the security settings. But you can always add the add-ons. If you search for it directly, you know exactly where you're going. Just go directly to it, hit the Add to Firefox button, and I actually already have it set up and configured. So that's all we're gonna do. So uh, parenthetical over, we're on Firefox. Let's go ahead and add to Firefox. This is going to ask us to add it. It's gonna access data for websites, exchange messages with programs other than Firefox, input data to the clipboard. That's one I'd like to some of the security guys to look into uh, since that's not really my field. I'd like to see if there's any comment on that. I am going to allow it to go for private windows because I actually use some of my logins I do for private windows. Some of them I do not do for private windows. So now that it is set up, you can see we have our key pass uh, over here. And now we need to give it a connect button. So go ahead and hit connect. We need to give it a name. So we will call this guy Firefox and I'll just do KP for key pass. Save and allow access. So now we come down here and what we can see is it is now set up. It is able to find it there. But now what we need to do is let's go ahead and log into a website. So let's go to mail.tutanoa.com. You can see here, nothing happens. And over here, nothing happens. The reason is because we do not have that URL in the password database. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll hit OK there. Let's copy this guy from my notes and we'll paste it into the URL. Push OK. Now we'll come down here, redetect the logins. Let's go ahead and refresh the page there. There it goes. Now it pulls up KeyPass. It asks us, would we like to use this? We can disable it for this site. We can deny all. We can allow selected. So you can see it's going to grab my, my uh, user here for Tutanoa. Hit allow selected. And you can see right there, just click on the KeyPass button. It automatically fills in the username and the password. So there we have it. So here is uh, select the login page you like entered into the page. So that's just some extra information there. That all happened because we put the login in. Now if I hit the login, that is gonna go ahead and get us all logged into this page. The same thing is going to happen if we were to go over and use Plex as the other one that I have. Now with Plex, this one here I did find was a little bit more complicated because if you go to the main Plex homepage, the problem is the main Plex homepage gives us a, a sign in box that does a little pop over here. Oh, wow. Actually, that's, uh, yeah, actually, that, that actually worked. That's actually the first time that worked for me. I was actually not expecting it to do that. So it worked. Look at that. <laughs> Usually I was having to go to uh, app.plex.tv to get logged in, but there you go. It actually found it. Uh, so it's working better than it did for me on the test. So I can go ahead and get signed in to Plex there. So there is how we can get that working. I did test this on a variety of different uh, different browsers. So let's go ahead and boot some of these guys up. Here's your Chromium web browser. So I have my KeePass XC. And let's go over to Mail. I cannot spell Tutanoa. I think that's it. Let's hit the login field over here. And then you can see here, it detects that there's a password for this. Let's go ahead and allow selected. Click the button, boom, it automatically fills everything in. And I can go ahead and get logged in there and it will work. So there is Chromium. We already looked at LibreWolf. LibreWolf is just triggered by the Firefox because it basically is just a, a policy modded, uh, just a policy modded, um, uh, Firefox. Let's do app.plex.tv because I can spell that at least. And when we come over here, let's go ahead and hit our redetect login fields. There it is, allow selected, 
click the button, and now we have our username or password directly from our KeyPass key database. So there is Libra Wolf, so that one works just fine. And Vivaldi, of course we tested Vivaldi out. Vivaldi does use the Chromium extension. Let's not do that. Let's go, let's see if I can remember how to spell mail. There we are. So now it works just fine as well. And sadly, Edge is not working because they don't have that turned on, unless it proves me wrong this way. So let's go to So you can see here, key pass is disconnected. We can hit reload. It was not successful. And that is again, sadly, because it is still in development mode. The option to enable it is not set up. So of course, if I want to use one browser for certain login things and other browsers not for, Number one, obviously, just don't install the browser extension. But number two, you can fine tune it by toggling these guys on or off as you see fit. So that way now we have a, a key pass manager database. It's all offline. Nothing is in the cloud. And we are not relying on storing any passwords in the browser, which has been demonstrated to be insecure. So there we have it. There's how we can go ahead and get integration in with our browsers. I did all this here on Linux and I have full confidence this would work perfectly fine on Windows and on Mac as well. If you guys are interested in anything relating to uh, Android uh, KeyPass management, uh, let me know in the comments there. If I get enough people, I'll go ahead and look into it. It's not something I generally do because I just don't use my phone for things like that. Uh, but anyway, that is, um, that is a, a good application, good use. I definitely recommend moving forward. If you've not already switched to a password manager, definitely switch to one. And over here on Linux, I think KeePass XC is one of your best. If you are looking for a good FOSS uh, cloud browser, uh, cloud password manager, uh, for some reason, Bitwarden is probably the best on that. Go have a look at uh, TechLore's channel. It has an excellent video on comparing KeePass with Bitwarden with all of the pros and cons. Uh, that also has apps. That actually, Bitwarden has more apps for, specifically for the individual devices. It also has, um, it also has the, the browser integration plugins like KeePass XC has. But this for me is the absolute perfect solution. It's very secure, relies only on external encrypted databases, and we're not gonna be storing our passwords in the browser's memory, which is always going to be dangerous. So there we have it. Let me know if this was a helpful video in the comments down below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.